All right, you're listening to NYC Radio Live. David Ellenbogen here. I'm with Alusha Tsunadze. Uh, really exciting um, to be with him because he just came out with this new album, Yes and No. So, um, yeah, we, we were thinking of starting off with a track. What, what, should, we, what should we listen to? Uh, let's listen to Shenma Survilma Damlia. It's a traditional song from Georgia, the country, not the state. Got it. All right, let's check it out. Shenma Survilma Damlia Shenze pikrma da sevdama Shostas la Khshirat gakharama Kulis toilet khedama Kargi kharagats kargi Megus Matsev Har Nislada Mindaro Zudemok Shorte Guzedemok Mulo Itlada Tazed Modia Nateroni Skiva Dajaris Jarada Vera Hadava Divlevo Tremli Chamam di Squarada Nice. All right. So, can you can you tell us a little about what we we just heard? Yeah. Um, so, this is one of the eleven or so songs that are on the record that are all uh, traditional Georgian songs that um, I've sort of found my own way of playing. Um, it's one that comes from an old poem from I think uh 1800s and um it's a it's a real heartbreaker it sort of starts with being in love with somebody and by the end he says something like 
you'll never have m- me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the shoes on the other foot by the end of the song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's thanks to you. I think you were the one who, um, I don't know, five or six or more years back, introduced me to Georgian music, which was I'm um, very thankful for. Um, so. If people don't know much about that, that that tradition, you know, can you can you bring us in a little bit? Yeah. Well, I would start with saying that if you want to hear like traditional Georgian music, you should probably not listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most traditional stuff is usually uh, an a cappella choir, uh, at least three voices, and uh, the music is really fascinating. There's different parts of within Georgia, like different regions that have their own musical styles. But the thing that they pretty much all share is that uh, there's an acapella, you know, it's like singing tradition uh, with three parts. And um, the harmonies are really interesting. There are a lot of uh, things that, you know, to the quote unquote Western ear will sound dissonant at times. And, um, some things that sound a little bit more, you know, church-like, but uh, overall, it's a it was a really old uh, musical tradition, and and there is, you know, there are many many bands in in Georgia that are still keeping that tradition alive, and some of them come to the U.S. and tour. And it's really beautiful music. Yeah, and it's it's microtonal, right? It's not a, sometimes. Yeah, some of the stuff is definitely not tuned in the sort of uh, you, you know, um, tempered mm-hmm. uh, tuning, uh, and a lot of the stuff is not uh, based on Western harmony, so it'll it won't be like in a major or minor scale. It's sometimes in between and sometimes modulating from one to the other. Cool, and and also like uh, I don't know I. I I interviewed those guys. I don't know if you know this group of Iberi. Iberi, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, they they're great. They were just in the U.S. I think, yeah, right? they're amazing. And it seemed from hanging with them that that drinking played a big role in this whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, there are uh, like other folk music styles. There are occasions for uh, singing like their work songs. There are lullabies, but uh, there are there are like funeral chants, um, but overwhelmingly, uh, drinking brings out music in I think in all cultures, right. and so and Georgians love to drink, and right. so yeah, there's there there are these feasts called the supra, and um, they'll uh, you know if you go to Georgia you you'll most likely be invited to a supra and and that's a feast that'll go on for hours and hours all night and and uh there are specific toasts that are given throughout the night that go with with all the drinking and there are songs that will go through through the as the evening progresses got it so uh you uh, you you came to this country when um i came in 1991 um, I was eight years old then, and it was right um, as the Soviet Union was falling apart. And uh, literally a month after we came, uh, there uh, the civil war broke out in Georgia uh, because there was kind of this power vacuum, as the, you know, leadership in Moscow wasn't there anymore, and and um, there were all these different factions in, within Georgia fighting for who's going to, you know, be in charge of the newly independent. You know, country, right? So you come over here. Uh, you were already exposed to some Georgian music, like it was all around when you were young, or is it something that kind of came a little bit later? Yeah, more later. When I was growing up under, you know, the Soviet rule, there was Georgian music around. It's you know, it's not like it wasn't around, but I was more so exposed to just general like Soviet radio um, and my parents weren't musicians or anything they were they were into uh, the Beatles and Pink Floyd and Queen and stuff so mm. um, I didn't uh, actually I didn't dig back into Georgian music till much later in life I, I wound up 
like I said, I came when I was eight, and then I started playing guitar when I was 12. And, you know, I plastered my walls with Jimi Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan po posters, you know. And um, it wasn't until uh, I was later on, like in college maybe, when I first came upon a, a recording of Georgian folk music at, at like a CD store, or like Virgin, uh, you know, CD store. And... Um, it was actually now a lot of people kind of kind of shun this recording because it was made during Soviet times and it was one of these like hundred people choirs, oh, <laughs> so wow. it's not like super f traditional in that sense because usually it would be much smaller the choir. Um, uh, but the recording really uh, got into me because I thought, "Whoa, this stuff!" You know, this, my family left this stuff behind, and I wound up listening to that CD uh, like a hundred times. And then, what, what's that called? Uh, it was it was uh, an early Rustavi ensemble recording. Um, I think the actually the name of it was like you know Georgian polyphonic music or something like okay. that. It was like one like a generic title, um, and it, it's a great recording actually. Uh, and the some of the, the those songs that I learned from that recording I still sing, and uh, but. What happened was I was going to, to school for jazz. I was studying jazz guitar and improvisation. And um, the summer I, uh, that I graduated, I, I had the plan to go back to Georgia for the first time to, to visit the place, to visit my relatives. And um, at that point, it had been, you know, that was 2005. And so it had been like 24 years, I guess, since we had moved to the U.S., no, not 24, 14 years since we had moved, right? 91 to 2005. Um, and um, that's when I first went back in, in 2005 is when I was really exposed to it on a, on a deep level. I was surrounded by it. I, you know, I sought out musicians and um, I went to some shows and, and I tried to make friends within the you know the the traditional music community and um that's when i came back from that trip in 2005 is and i returned to new york and i thought okay this is uh something that i have to kind of work with now now that i kind of had this jazz degree i was ready to for something more personal something more more interesting uh and um you know to myself and and that that was kind of the birth of this whole project, and and you felt some kind of like resonance, kind of like, and some kind of past life or genetic or just cultural. Like you're like this is, this is my music. <laughs> like you, did you have that feeling, or 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 was it just? Uh... Uh, that's interesting. Um, yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> that's like as the title says. <laughs> um, uh, I definitely, uh, it definitely resonated, the, the music definitely resonated in my kind of bones. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I really connected with it and the language because I had lost a lot of the language. I spoke, I still spoke it in, in the U.S. My grand, uh, grandparents were here or one of my, my grandfather was here. And so I would speak to him in Georgian and my dad and, and, um, so singing and hearing music in that language that I grew up speaking in was mm. was really resonant, and those harmonies, you know, really. I mean, they give me the goosebumps, but they give a lot of people goosebumps. <laughs> um, I think there was something about how my country, my my family left this whole culture behind, you know, and sort of flew across the ocean. And so it was not even just the music of it. It was it was really um, this part of my life that mm -hmm. and and that my that me and my family kind of had to separate from. And so to reintegrate that, it, it felt it it felt really special. Yeah, I have one question. It's kind of out of um, we kind of like left this topic behind ten minutes ago. But but did when since it's it's rare to, to meet someone who was lived under a communist kind of rule, even though you're only eight was, do you remember like a feeling of like, 
did did it have a feeling <laughs> the soviet union yeah like yeah did it have like could could you put your finger around it or or that's funny i've just been reading 1984 you know which i think is like can talks a lot about that and um it's there's definitely a feeling I, the memories that i have are you know these giant posters of lenin and stalin kind of hanging everywhere um and the whole school system you know that i was in was you know you had like these little red stars that you try to be um this like excellent excellent student of the soviet state you know um but uh by the time i think by the late 80s and also in in georgia especially i think um it wasn't the grip wasn't that strong um georgia georgia was like the southern border of of the soviet union so it borders turkey and and um which is already not the soviet union and um it always was kind of like more liberal than if you had gone to other p- parts of the soviet union mm-hmm. And in fact, my grandparents, my mom, from my mom's side, moved to Georgia um, in like the seventies or something because they, um, the light, like life was a little bit more chill there. Mm-hmm. And Georgia makes a lot of its own food and has a really strong culture of its own. And they managed to sort of be able to to keep that going and not just become a purely like Soviet state. So, so I think it's like mixed like that, yeah. All right. Well, back on track. So, uh, you you know, you said that was kind of the beginning of this whole uh, musical project that you've been on, and that this album is just part of. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe it's a good time. Let, let's let's hear something else. What, what should we take a listen to? Um, let's listen to Iam Taze. This is a song I learned from um, this wonderful singer Ketevan Mindorashvili. And her group Zedashe, um, who has come over to the U.S. once or twice, and um, this is a really special uh, thing for me because, uh, yeah, they Zedashe released this record, um, you know, about ten years ago, and it, that was one of those records again that that really that I absorbed. I, I like learned a lot of the songs on on it, and. Um, when I was in the process of making this album, Yes and No, um, I traveled to Georgia. I, I recorded most of it in New York, but I, I wanted to have some of the recording to be done in Georgia. And uh, I went out to uh, Signari, which is this small town where Ketevan lives. And uh, I, I told her that I was recording a song that I learned from her. And I said, would you uh, be interested in singing it with me as a duet? And so she... Um, very generously agreed and so it's a duet with her wow all right i'm psyched let's take a listen Oh, 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 oh,
Wow, beautiful, man. <laughs> Thank you. It has like a really um, ethereal kind of feeling. Does um the the particular like emotion of like longing it, there's like a, a couple typical emotions or or that I, I sense in Georgian music like they they touch on this like kind of pathos thing is that am I onto something is that I mean maybe that's universal but it seems like a specific type of Georgian thing that they capture in the <laughs> Georgian vocal. sadness yeah the Georgian people tend to dress like in all black all the time they're always like mourning <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're either like partying uh, you know and you know drinking their but or they're or they're like really solemn in some ways. Um, this song is, <laughs> it's true. Uh, this song is about like the the narrator is singing uh, about her fiance because she, yeah she's getting ready to marry him and he goes like hunting with her dad so with his fa- like soon to be father in law and he shoots him. <laughs> so. all right okay so <laughs> so yeah my instinct was onto something <laughs> yeah and it was an intentional shooting or? yeah 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 wow yeah um yeah and also that's kind of um i think i am drawn to music that's that's dark and, and sad and and, and uh, uh I, i'm generally a pretty happy person i i we try to live in the moment, and and I, I think that's really important. But uh, in me, my my music, the space for music is is really for me is a place for for darkness and weirdness, and uh, I think that's just the most interesting stuff to explore sometimes. Let's unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like therapy with you, Helen Bogan. <laughs> um, I've never been to a therapist though, though I guess. <laughs> Here's your chance. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, do you feel that that like just the emotional space of the darkness in the music? It like, I mean, personally, if I tried to write a a hundred percent pure love song, I don't think I'd be, you know, like a very. That's like the criticism of say Paul McCartney. Like, why people are like, I like John Lennon more because it's like, um. Uh, I feel good and it's a sunny day. You know, yeah. <laughs> is that um is that is that kind of what you think draws you to the to that that space in the music or it's just is what Yeah, I mean, come on, it's art in general is and the human condition is you know <laughs> this whole thing like that's what kind of unites us I think is the the is kind of pain, suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I say it with a laugh. Uh, it's. I think. I, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah and the, and and then Georgia. Just where Georgia is geographically meant that there was always some army coming through in, in one direction, right? I mean. Yes. Yes. Did you learn that from the Berry guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That you go to like. Uh, an old church, you know, if you go and there'll, there'll be this really long plaque, it'll be like, this church was built in like something like 1100. And then it was burnt down by this army in 1150. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. And then it was rebuilt in 1180. And then it was burnt down by this other army in 12 something. You know, it's just, there is, uh, it's definitely in a crossroads, especially the, the lowlands of Georgia. They're, they're, um, there is uh, a lot of traffic going through there um yeah but also also you know there there it's not like all the songs are are about you know mourning mm-hmm. or something like that but it, it's a i think it's a very uh, in, it's a good thing to embrace in a way in, in music and as i said i i i love uh music that's just um it's it is about pure joy or something like that but it's it's wonderful i think to hold the space for for darkness and you know and have yeah like a a, a creative and artistic and emotional place that's that's about that it's not i don't think it's destructive or anything 
Yeah, sure. So, okay, so you're this, you're you're in college. You discover Georgian music. Um, you you headed out there that and and it all came together. Yeah. So we sort of rewind back yeah. to when I when I was first getting into it. Um, so after college, I spent like a whole summer there, and th- that was a real tipping point. Um, I moved soon. I moved out to New York City soon after that, and I started uh, my a group um, playing this music, and we recorded our first record back in I think around two thousand nine or two thousand ten, around then, and uh, that was all. Uh, Almost all of the songs in that record were uh, traditional uh, melodies for dancing. So similar to, uh, say, like Irish music, there is a there is an instrumental tradition in Georgia as well that's a little, that's less known than the vocal mm-hmm. tradition. And so I thought, oh, you know, this is a not an explored area, and uh, especially be coming from the jazz background, I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of explore these melodies and. Uh, so I started this group with uh, accordion, which is used a lot in that kind of music in Georgia, and violin, which isn't. And this guy, Rob Hecht, was um, playing with me then. He he came from the Irish music background, so it was with yeah with accordion, violin, and this whole group with um, you know bass and drums. And we recorded this uh, album of mostly of these traditional dance tunes. And uh, from that album. I decided to, I sang on two of the songs and one of them uh, uh, that the, one of the two songs that I sang which were not the dance tunes were vocal songs um, we made a music video for and it was one of these weird um, internet things where uh, I put out the video before that I had actually finished the album I had I was still kind of in process of you know tying everything together for the album but I had made this sort of single and I remember I put the song out and within a day you know just the the YouTube views were just like running up you know and then it it just went you know it was like a thousand five thousand ten thousand twenty thousand and the song went sort of viral in Georgia and mm-hmm. all these uh People there were like, "Oh my God, this this, this kid, you know, who left Georgia as a you know a, a long time ago, is playing this music in New York, and and it became this national kind of sensation. I wound up uh, being on all these like news channels, and they were interviewing me through. I had to go to Midtown to do this like interview that was like live streamed, and on these Georgian talk shows and stuff, and uh, that was really cool because then the summer after that, when I returned to Georgia all of a sudden people were you know stopping me on the street and they were like oh I love your song (laughs) (laughs) yeah so it was it was it it was really well received that that especially in particular this one this one song that's just like a real it's a kind of a party song it's really really fun were you like in that moment where you like kept like refreshing your browser to watch the the, (laughs) like watch the 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 that's funny. The you know, actually, come it, up got, like, it got like a little depressing because what I didn't want to um, monetize my YouTube, uh, you know, song. So um, I didn't put any ads on it, but I, it got ripped by like, by a number of different people. <laughs> so then there was other people that were posting my song, you know, and putting ads on it. And there is also a Georgian sort of version of YouTube that it got copied over to as well. So then I just was seeing all these other people. Uh, I still got, you know, some like hundreds of thousands of plays on mine. But but it was it was a little depressing to see that it was getting uh, even more plays on these other channels. Right. These people that were cashing like, in. Yeah, they were putting ads on it. I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah, so that's lovely. welcome to show business. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, uh, um, but yeah, that was yeah. so that was the kind of start of it. Yeah. And then. Um, after after that uh, um, song and that album, it was well received, and we played some shows in Georgia. That was really fun. Um, I took some time. Um, I was uh, working on other projects as well. I, I re- was recording some of my own original music and playing with other groups in New York. 
and uh, some years had passed and I, I decided that I wanted to record another album of Georgian music. And this time I uh, wanted to sing on, on the album because as we were playing the, the uh, shows, I found that uh, music, even though there is um, uh, an instrumental tradition, the music really translates through, through the words and through the vocal parts. And um, I, um, I, I, I felt like it was re really important for me to, to try to tackle this, this thing of singing these traditional songs. And um, yeah, so I've sort of spent the last maybe five or six years really embracing that side of it. And, and uh, on this album, I, I sing all but, I think, one of the songs yeah in georgian yeah. yeah yeah i feel like um in case it slips my mind the uh the jewish promoter in me wants you to make sure you use youtube sensation in in future copy <laughs> um yeah i don't, I don't know what clout that really gets you but <laughs> sure <laughs> um cool well let's uh yeah maybe let's let's hear another something uh something what should we hear um well <clears throat> this would be cool why don't we listen to um kind of something that re refers to some of these things that we're talking about yeah. um uh track four on the record is called uh, uh no track five rather is called Horumi, and it's a it is a traditional dance song and it it features this most wonderful clarinetist named peter hess he He's playing on it with me as I play banjo. And it transitions directly into a traditional song called Shuka Shuka. And um, uh, so it, with, with the instrumental piece, I'm kind of referencing back to that first album and that tr style. And with Shuka Shuka, um, <clears throat> this, is, this song features some, I think, like three or four um of my friends in Georgia, and uh, you'll hear some yodeling. It's traditional yodeling, oh, nice. and it's a it's a real uh, kind of combination of things, all these different elements. Where yeah, you. So I think it'd be kind of fun to hear. Cool. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
Nice. Thank you. Do you find that yodeling always elicits a response in an audience? Like, does that does it spark something? Uh, probably, though. I don't. I I don't get to uh, tour around with these guys that are living in uh-huh. Tbilisi, so I don't. I don't get the privilege of seeing the audience's reaction to a yodel. <laughs> yeah, I just think yeah, it's, there's something primal about a yodel that <laughs> yeah people can't deny. Yeah, it's incredible, and the, the the volume of the yodel is is incredible too. You know, they'll they'll be singing against the backdrop of like you know twenty people singing as loud as they can, and then the yodel will just go shoot right past mm. it all. Yeah, yeah, and I guess there's something. Yeah, listening to music on recordings, I guess you can't really feel that um, that physical thing that's happening with all these bodies kind of vibrating yeah yeah is there a particular place that it, it tends to like resonate in this tradition like is it like the, the chest is like really rumbling or yeah well um yeah i think there's definitely this it's a very primal kind of way of singing right because it doesn't doesn't it's not subtle in in yeah. in that kind of traditional in the way that you know we'll usually sing but also i think a lot of the yodeling music comes from the mountains and Mm -hmm. it comes from the mountains in georgia and it comes from mountains in other parts of the world i think as it it has this this power to just kind of travel so far and Hmm. fun yes i love it it sounds beautiful thanks and did you have to work i mean these guys all have such amazing pitch you know and they're not they're not like sliding into the note like everybody's so right on Mm -hmm. did it take you a while to be able to 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 fall in with with this kind of stuff or man i I, i'm still definitely a a student and uh uh, well i mean with i guess this is kind of the case with a lot of the different traditional music styles of around the world you know um as the a lot of the people that are singing traditional georgian music have been singing it since before you know since they could talk uh, a lot a lot not all of them but most of them that i know you know they grew up with their parents singing traditional songs and they learned them from from such a young age and um Yes, especially in terms of the voice, I feel like uh, such a student, you know, because, um, you know, to be able to sing harmonies that are uh, sometimes the the like this, there's this style in because uh, called the Kachetian style, and that it's a little bit more influenced from Middle East M- Middle Eastern music, and they have these these amazing like, glissandos and that they do actually with their voices they'll just oh, they'll do all these crazy mm-hmm. ornaments and stuff like that that are you you know that just that i would never even perform that stuff it's just like it's my i sing that when i whenever i walk under a bridge and there's like a lot, a lot of echo or something like yeah. that or at home you know for myself but yeah these uh certain vocal traditions and actually within georgia there's you know Choir, there are a lot of choirs that are singing all musical styles like Iberi choir sings music from all around Georgia but um, uh, and myself too but actually somebody from one part of the country would grow up singing only the music from that part of the country right so the Cajetin uh, singers usually would never try to sing something from Swanetti which is all the way up in the mountains and it's like you know an eight hour drive but you know over the thousands of years as they've been singing that it's there was not almost any you know traveling from one part to the other so so the swan harmonies and the swan singing style which is very strong and and has a lot of these harmonies that are like st- f- stacks of fourths and and whole steps uh yeah they have they're like a tradition of their own and the, those people are singing that thing and then the other, everybody you know the other people are singing their own styles and the yodelers are coming from another part of the country so th- there's you know there's really like a lot of work in each part and that you know the singers are doing yeah wow so you you know i think we covered 
your explorations of of Georgia a little bit, but I mean, you're also just like an American dude as well. <laughs> you know, that's that's a lot of your story. So, um, so what were the other things that that made it into the the mix for you? Like, um, yeah, well, that's always uh, the the thing that I'm trying to stay true to, right? Um, and that even like the title of the record, yes and no. Uh, speaks to that uh, it speaks to um, me being from this place that's you know across the world but also having spent most of my life in on this side of the ocean and um, I, I've been with this album and in general with the work I do is, is kind of embracing that complexity you know so uh, yeah like my influences come from it's like some of this like psychedelic rock from the 60s like uh, i mean uh you know and Jimi hendrix is still a big influence of mine on the guitar but um also just there's like electronic elements in there that i'm like playing the vocal parts in reverse and i'm um playing banjo on the record which is something i you know been playing for the last 10 years and i definitely didn't learn that in georgia right right yeah and, you're into american folks yeah, yeah yeah i'm yeah exactly like i i really like um american folk music traditions and and traditions really from around the world is there's parts you know there's sort of that's the thing with living in new york right it's there's just so many different elements you, you go to a, a little club you know 15 minutes away like barbez and you have um, incredible like West African music that you can hear there you know every Wednesday night and there's the Balkan brass band where uh, the clarinetist that I play with he he comes out of he plays in that group Slavic Soul Party he's been playing with them for 20 years or whatever so yeah there's all those different elements that I'm surrounded by um, are definitely in there for me and and there there are I feel like more so as I do it for longer um i think at first when i started playing that music i felt like i had something to prove uh as in terms of my georgian identity that i could play georgian music you know in whatever style and uh, i think as i get older i'm more and more interested in in the weird and 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 less in sort of proving myself and mm. uh since the, it's funny this since this record came out um i've been uh kind of this is something that i've been doing for years and i've been just kind of been recording this now and every every day pretty much i uh do these free improvisations on mostly on my guitar and i create these crazy textures and uh, you know i have like 12 pedals that i work through so and that is that's been leaking into the georgian project you know and uh there's a lot of improvisation that's going into uh, our our live shows and a lot of electronic elements. All right. Well, I think we're good. What should we What should we take it out on? What should, what should we? Um, I say uh, we could finish with with the last track on the album, and this kind of goes back to the the, the melancholy. This is a song uh, you would traditionally hear it as this real party happy party song, uh, and um, uh, I sort of found my own voice in playing this one by by seeing kind of the the the, the sadness in the song and it's a really simple one it it's, doesn't have a ton of people on the track it's it's just me and the acoustic guitar singing and um, just towards the end you'll hear a couple of other instruments. What are, what are the words about? Uh, the words say. Um, uh, uh, for for your with your like I'm I would drink wine rather than water, and I would kiss you rather than another. Uh, so it's a, it's a love song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you found you found some sadness somewhere. Oh yeah, it's sad, you know, because you're not actually with her yet. You know. <laughs> ah, I see. All uh, right. Yeah. Well, congrats on the new album. Great. Thank you. With yeah, you. check it out. Yeah. Um, the, my website is uh, ilusha.com and um, I'm on Instagram. You can 
you know, just look up Alusha, I-L-U-S-H-A. All right. Dali, 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 dali,